All right, welcome back folks. Today is gonna to be our next 308 video. And I wanna to return to a bullet that we've tested a little bit with, but not had very much success. It's the 165 grain Sierra Game Changer. These guys, also known as the Tipped Game King. When these first hit the market, I bought a box. We tested them in my Tika bolt action rifle and also in the AR-10 with one of our previous barrels. Well, since then, we've got a nice Krieger barrel in our AR-10 that's really shooting well. So I wanted to come back to these and see how they shoot in the Krieger. Now, unfortunately, I've only got 20 of them left. So before I go buying a new box, Let's see how these 20 do. And what I wanna compare them with are the good old Game Kings, the 165 grain Sierra Game King. Now you might think the Game King and the tipped Game King would be similar bullets, but they are not. Here's a picture of them side by side. You can see extremely different bullet designs. The tipped Game King has a much longer boat tail, radically different O-Drive design. The bearing surface of the, uh, of the Game Changers is a good bit longer. So these have very little in common. I'll be interested to see how they shoot when compared to one another. Now for powder, I wanna use IMR 8208 XBR. We've been shooting a lot of Reloader 15 lately. The last couple videos, we've almost exclusively been using Reloader 15. I wanna branch out a little bit and try something different. IMR 8208 XBR is one of my favorite powders. It always seems to give good accuracy. So that's what I'm hoping for today. I also wanna try some different brass. I bought a box of the Lapua Palma brass that uses small rifle primers. So that's what we're gonna to use today. It's brand new, so this is its first firing. So I measured the maximum overall length with each of these bullets in my rifle. And looking at those different ogive shapes, you might not be surprised to find that the numbers were drastically different between the two. The long and skinny tipped Game King, the Game Changer, doesn't hit the lands of the rifling until about 2.975 inches. Well, in our AR-10 platform, to fit in the magazine, we can't go much over 2.8 with the, with the uh, Magpul magazines I'm using. So that's, that's gonna be our test overall length today is 2.8 inches. So that means with the tipped Game King, we're, we've got 175 thousandths of jump to the lands. That's quite a lot. Now with the standard Game King, our maximum overall length is about 2.850. So we're gonna shoot that same 2.8 inch overall length, but with those, we're only gonna have about 50 thousandths of jump to the lands. So the standard Game Kings, a whole lot less jump. For charge weights, the first place I checked was the Sierra Load Data. They show a max charge of 44.3 grains with both of these bullets. And the Hodgton website, I think their test bullet in the 165 range was a Hornady, but it was 42.8. And then I looked in the Hornady manual, it was 43.2. So that 43 to 44 range was the max everywhere I checked. Now, the thing is, I would rather not tear up this brand new Lapua brass because this, this gun's been kind of picky on that, right? We've been tearing up some brass. So I want to keep the charge weights, uh, you know, a good little bit below max. I want to shoot up to 42.0 grains. Here's what the load data looks like. We'll shoot four groups with each. We'll start at 40.8 and we'll go up in four tenths of a grain increments, which takes us to 42.0. The primer is going to be the CCI number 41 primers, and I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that covers it. So the first step is I wanna run this new brass through a sizing die just to straighten out the necks at all. I did double check to make sure that this brass fits into my chamber no problem. Those of you following along might know that I got a I got a uh, cartridge that wasn't quite sized properly stuck into the chamber of a Krieger barrel recently. So I'm very, uh, so I wanna be very careful about that. These go right in and right out. So we don't need to bump the shoulder. We don't need to like pull out a small base sizing die and size them down at all. They're going into and out of the chamber okay. Just want to make sure the necks are round before we load them up. So let's do that. So I pulled out a standard Hornady custom grade full length sizing die, and I'm just gonna screw it down until it uh, lightly touches the show holder and then back it off just a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Like I said, we don't need to touch the shoulder, just wanna iron out any issues with the neck. And I don't expect the body of the case or the shoulder to touch the die, so I'm not gonna worry about lubing them up a bunch. I'm just gonna use some Redding Imperial Dry Neck Lube. We just dunk these down in there just a little bit tap off the excess and let's see if this works okay. So up and into there. That was a little more resistance than I would have liked. Nope, it came right out. And just wipe off the excess lube and we're ready to go. 
Yeah, getting a little bit more resistance than I'd like on this next one. Please come out of there. Crap. All right, this isn't good. I, we might have a stuck case here. Nope, come on out. Yeah, it looks like the body of our case did hit a little bit. So, time for a change of plans. So, goodbye dry neck lube. Hello, Reading Imperial Sizing Dye Wax. This stuff right here. Shouldn't need much, just a very light, tiny little bit on each case to keep them from sticking. Let's see if this does a little bit better job. Yep, right up in there and right back out. So it'll take a little bit longer to wipe off each case, but better that than getting one stuck. So that's about it here. I'll get these finished and we'll be ready to go ahead and start priming. Okay, so I've screwed up pretty bad here. I'm sure some of you probably spotted it and were screaming at your screens while I was doing it, but this Lapua Palma brass has got small flash holes and the Hornady sizing die I was using does not have a small decapping pin. So that's what was making my resizing harder than I expected is I was punching this freaking decapping pin through the little flash hole. So my first 40 pieces of this brand new Lapua brass have been screwed up. I've punched out the uh, stinking flash holes. What makes it worse is punching those out from the inside left a ring around them, you know, basically kind of stretched them out. So what I'm gonna have to do at this point is use a primer pocket reamer to get rid of that. Now I've got a Lyman uh, primer pocket reamer that only cuts at the bottom. So I was playing around with a couple of them here and it's, it's knocking off that high spot pretty quickly and pretty easily. So that's what I gotta do. And now what sucks, so I've got 60 pieces that I haven't screwed up yet that are still brand new. But from this point forward, it's gonna be a huge pain in the butt to keep the batches separate. I'll probably just go ahead and intentionally screw up 10 more. So I've got 50 pieces with enlarged flash holes and 50 pieces with the smaller flash holes. I don't know, maybe we can make a test out of that in the future, but I certainly didn't do it on purpose. This isn't the first time I've done this either. I did it not that long ago with some 6.5 Grendel brass that also has the small flash hole. So a little bit depressing here. I think what I'm gonna do is grab my Frankfurt Arsenal case prep center. Yeah, this guy right here. And I'll screw this reamer onto this guy and should just take a couple seconds a piece. All right, so I got the primer pockets all uniformed, which I was calling that a primer pocket reamer. That was a primer pocket uniformer. And I guess I could show you the difference here. This is a reamer. See how it's got cutting edges down the side and not so much on the bottom. This is a tool, I've never ever found a use for this, right? Primer pockets being too tight and needing reamed out is a pretty uncommon problem in my experience. But the primer pocket uniformer, now that cuts all of the pockets to a uniform depth. Much different thing. All right, so I got a little bit angry that I'd screwed up my new brass. I really didn't feel like talking to the camera, so I've skipped a couple steps here. Brass prep is finished, the charges are weighed out, and I'm to the point where I'm ready for bullet seating. The bullet seating die we're gonna use is, is a Hornady, the custom grade bullet seating die with the micro just adapter on top. Yep, that little guy. I checked the seating stem fit, which I'm actually using the, where'd it go? Yeah, this is the one. This is the seating stem I'm using, and it fits both of these bullets better than the standard one. This is the one that came in the die with the die set, and it's a bad fit with pretty much everything. I don't, I don't think I've ever found a bullet this thing fits really nicely. So I generally end up using the ELD stem for most stuff anyway. All right, so let's see. Set up, take off a bullet here, run a case up into the die. Screw the die down until it touches the case mouth. There it is. And then we back it off at least one turn. And I like to do it where I can read the, the scale on the micro just. So that's like a, a, a turn and a quarter off the shell holder. Tighten it down, we're ready to seat. So we're starting with the original Game Kings. We're shooting for a 2.8 inch overall length with both of these bullets. And I did a little math and it should be a 2.225 inch cartridge based ogive measurement with the Game King. So we're about 140 thousandths long right now. So let's go ahead and go down 50, 100. We'll go down 135, see where that puts us. Now I'm at 2.238, so we need 13 more. And I'll go ahead and just dial in exactly 13 and see if that gives us what we need. And it's perfect. 
2.225, which should give us that 2.8 inch overall length. Pretty darn close, 2.799. Now with the Game Kings, of course they've got exposed lead tips, which get boogered up sometimes. Your actual overall length is gonna vary a little bit, but our cartridge-based ogive measurement should stay the same. So here's the next one, perfect. Cartridge-based ogive, 2.225. Total overall length is a little bit shorter on this one, 2.794. No big deal. I kind of erred on the short side just a little bit so that we don't run into any magazine fitment problems. And these charges of uh, 8208 XBR, plenty of case capacity still left over. So I don't think we're gonna have to worry about any compressed loads. I'll tell you what, I'll go over to our max charge just to check that real quick. Yep, we still got powder moving in the case. So our overall length number should be exactly the same, 2.225, perfect. Okay, now we're moving over to the game changers. So let me back out the die just a little bit, make sure we don't end up too short, and we'll seat the first one. Now our cartridge-based ogive target changes quite a bit here. 2.080 is what we're shooting for, and we are currently way long, about 180 thousandths long. 50, 100, 150, 60, 75. There we go, 175 thousandths. Let's see where that puts us. We are eight thousandths long, 2.088. Double check our overall length, 2.805. So perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and come down eight thousandths. Five, six, seven, eight. And that should put us where we wanna be. Go ahead and seat a couple of them. 2.798 overall length, exactly 2.080 cartridge-based ogive. The other one, perfect 2.080 cartridge-based ogive and 2.797 on the overall length. Now, if we look at the way the bullet's sitting in there, you'll see the bearing surface is right at the mouth of the case, right? The ogive is starting right there at the mouth of the case to fit into this 2.8 inch overall length. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, this bullet is much farther down into the case at this overall length. So I'm gonna switch over to our max charge and see if this is compressed. I don't think it will be. Didn't feel any crunching going on, but I really don't feel any powder moving in the case. So let's see if our overall length stretched at all. No, it does not look like it did, 2.080. Overall length, 2.799. Good, so I can seat all of these at the same die setting. So that pretty much covers it. Let's go ahead and head out to the range. Okay, it's time to get started. We've got a target at 100 yards. Our rifle is an Aero Precision M5E1 setup with an Aero Precision bolt carrier and a JP high pressure bolt. And the barrel is a Krieger with a one in 11 twist. The scope is a Vortex Strike Eagle, four to 24 by 50. And we've got a lab radar chronograph out here to collect our velocity data. We're starting out with the original Game King, the standard Game King. I have shot a few uh, rounds through the gun to get my scope zeroed and foul up the barrel a little bit, get everything warmed up and ready to go. So that's all done and we're ready to get going. First up is 40.8 grains. I better run down that first piece of brass. So the case head on the first piece of brass actually looks really good. That's one thing we're hoping for with this Palma brass. It's just, you know, the, with the small primer, more material there in the base, hopefully maybe it'll be a little bit more durable and not get torn up so easily in the AR-10. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. All right, let's see if these Game Kings will group. Ah, it's always the last shot. Screwed it up. So the air temperature right now is 94 degrees. It is extremely hot and there's no wind at all. So just from those first five shots, plus the, I think I shot three ciders or four cider shots before I hit record, I'm already getting some mirage coming off my suppressor. So I'm gonna go in and grab my suppressor cover, give this guy just a second to cool down, but hopefully that suppressor cover will help with the mirage. All right, so we've got the cover on the suppressor now. Those first five pieces of brass from that first group look great. No case head damage at all. So that's encouraging, not only for the powder. I think this is the first time we've shot 8208 XBR in this barrel in 308. So hopefully this will be a good powder that's easy on brass, but still, you know, functions the rifle well. The other thing, velocity, 2511. We're already into single digit standard deviation numbers, 9.7 there on the first group. It's all good. So let's move on. 41.2 grains is next. Oh, 
All right, that's a pretty good group. Case heads still look fantastic. Another great group, standard deviation down to 6.5. That's why we love 8208XBR, right? It's generally good for excellent standard deviation numbers and great groups across pretty much every cartridge I've tried it in. It's definitely one of my favorites. All right, we're moving on, 41.6 grains. So those five shots felt great, like those were all good shots, but we've got some serious vertical stringing now. I'm not all that shocked about this because when I was sighting in the gun, the cider ammo I had was the 167 grain Lapua CNR that we shot in the last video, I believe it was. Similar sort of uh, bullet shape to this Game King. And I sighted it in right for the right edge of the orange. So the first two groups, I was surprised to see them hit as low as they did. So I'm hoping what's going on here is we're just kind of going through that point of impact transition as our velocities come up and hopefully these next five all group high. I don't know, we'll see. But regardless, this is probably going to end up being kind of a crappy charge weight range because we want to stay away from those transitions as much as possible. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. So last up, 42.0 grains. So no, it didn't quite tighten back up, did it? The good news is the brass still looks great. Like it still looks fantastic. And when we chose our charge weights for today, if you remember, we chose kind of low charges. We've still got a grain or two of powder to go up. And I bet with this combination, if we kept going a couple more groups, things would tighten back up there on the, uh, on the high side, basically. The vertical string would stop and it would tighten back up towards the top. I don't know. We'll have to see that in a future video. But those first two groups, extremely promising for the 165 Game King with 8208XBR. So before I move on to the game changer, I'm gonna give the gun just a minute to cool down. I'm gonna go cool down myself a little bit and then we'll get back to it. All right, so I took a pretty nice long break. Guns had time to cool down and we're moving on to the Sierra Game Changer. If I had to guess, I would say that the groups are about to get really bad. I'm kind of worried about that long jump to the rifling. I don't know, let's find out. First up, 40.8 grains. Well, that shows you what I know. Four out of the five grouped perfectly. Just one out. That's a pretty darn good start. I'm happy with that. Velocity 2578, right? So we're higher than we were with the Game King, right? They're seated quite a bit deeper into the case. I assume that's probably most of it. Moving on, 41.2 grains is next. All right, so that wasn't a terrible group either. 2,600 feet per second. The brass still looks good. So next up, 41.6 grains. All right, that's not bad. Yeah, so that's not bad at all. And really good news, the brass still looks great. So we haven't torn up any of our new Lapua brass so far. I probably shouldn't have said that with five shots left. So let's move on and destroy these, 42.0 grains.
All right, that's a great way to finish things off. Like that's another pretty darn good group. The brass still looks great. It's all good. Like there's a whole lot to be happy about on this range trip. The game changer shot much better than I was anticipating. So it's all good. I tell you what, let's get back to the bench, talk it all out. All right, let's have a look at the brass. Look at this first eight rows here are the ones we shot today. This eighth row was our highest velocity load with the Sierra Game Changer. And these just look really good. If I look really, really hard, I, I, I spotted a few pieces that had maybe just the slightest little bit of an ejector mark, but it was just a hint, just the tiniest little bit. These are looking great. So there's really just not much to see. One thing I found interesting is I pulled out the Hornady Headspace Comparator just to see how, uh, how much the shoulder moved on these as we fired them. And tell you what, we'll use the same ones we just looked at. So there's a 1.626. The next one's also 1.626. You have to be careful taking this measurement with the primer still in the brass because if you got even the tiniest little bit of primer cratering or anything, it can throw off the measurement. But we didn't really have any primer cratering today. So I think we're okay. So 1.626, is that what it was? Well, this is a this is a brand new piece that wasn't fired. And I'm getting around 1.623 on these. So this Krieger barrel's got a pretty pretty tight chamber, headspace wise. This new Lapua only has three thousandths of excess headspace, which is good, right? So not a lot of movement on our brass. So that's about it here for brass. Okay, now let's have another look at the groups. Pretty good stuff here today. So, you know, six of our eight groups were under an inch and pretty similar performance with the two bullets. Like each of them shot a group in the 0.7s, one in the 0.8s, one in the 0.9s, and then had a bad group that was over an inch. So similar performance. Like I mentioned out on the range with the top row, the, the, the standard Game King, I'm still convinced that taking these charge weights up a little bit will hopefully tighten things back up. I think we just happened to land on kind of a crappy area there in that 41.6 and 42.0 range. And with the tip Game King at the bottom, things really tightened up on the top end. Like those last two groups where the velocity got up a little bit higher, 2631 and 2664, those were a couple of our best groups. And hopefully the Game King would do the same sort of deal. Maybe with both of these bullets, it's that 2550 feet per second up to 2600 feet per second range just doesn't seem to be where they wanna be. I didn't even include standard deviations here on this graphic because they were all very consistent and very good. Like the best number of the day was 6.5 and the worst was 11.0. So stable, consistent velocities across the board today with IMR 8208 XBR. So I am pleasantly surprised with the 165 Game Changer. That 175 thousandths of jump to the rifling didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. Pretty happy with the old Game King as well. Listen, both of these are good bullets. Like I would, I'd be happy to deer hunt with either of these bullets. And honestly, I hunt in Kentucky and generally take shorter shots. So the better ballistic coefficient and stuff of the Game Changer is a little bit wasted on me. So I didn't gel test these today. I did gel test the 6.5 millimeter Game Changer in 6.5 Creedmoor. The results were, you know, okay. If I'm remembering correctly, it expanded about like you would expect for this sort of bullet construction. I think what was disappointing about it at the time is we were also shooting the, the Spear Gold Dot rifle bullets into gel and they were performing outstanding. So the Game Changer kind of seemed a little bit disappointing in comparison. I have no idea where the hell I was going with this train of thought, but whatever. We didn't gel test it. Maybe we'll do that in the future here in 30 caliber at some point. I guess I should probably pick up another box. I don't know. I'll see if you guys are, are interested in this bullet. Those last two groups certainly piqued my interest. So I'm down to continue testing with the Game Changer if anyone's interested. So yeah, super disappointed that I screwed up my Lapua Brass. What I've got to do before I load my next 308 rounds, what I'm going to do is go through all of my 308 dies and remove the decapping pin from all of them. That's what I did in 6.5 Grendel because I, I don't really decap while I'm resizing, like ever. I generally decap with a universal decapping die and then I wet tumble and then I resize. And I bought a Redding decapping die not that long ago. Yeah, this is it right here. And it has got a tiny little decapping pen. So this is what I need to decap with. Let me double check here, show you. So we should be able to, yep, that pin goes right through that flash hole, no problem. So it sucks, but like I mentioned, I don't think it's going to make any difference whatsoever. Maybe we can test, maybe we can play with it in the future, but I just don't think it's a big deal. I think that, you know, that small flash hole 
is all about, you know, concentrating that primer flare, flash, whatever you call it, to a smaller point on the powder so you get more consistent ignition. Those of you who follow my 6.5 Creedmoor series, we've used a lot of small primer brass in 6.5 Creedmoor. That's pretty much all we've used. And we have had some problems with certain powders and certain primers not getting consistent ignition. We, we get hang fires. I did a whole hang fire investigation series where we tried a bunch of different uh, primers and tried to figure out what was going on. And over in that series, the CCI 41 primers that we use today, we found to be some of the best at consistently igniting the powder and not having any hang fires. And we also found like, like an extruded powder like we shot today, IMR 8208XBR, is not difficult to ignite. We had the worst hang fire problems with spherical powders, ball powders. So I, that's just something to keep in mind. You know, if you get some small primer brass for your 308 and you run into hang fires, that's, that's what's going on. It's either weak primers or a powder that's particularly difficult to, to ignite. That's another thing. Maybe we can try and recreate that. Now that we've got some small primer brass for 308, maybe we can try and recreate that scenario in 308 and see if we can observe the same problem. But back to the original point I was making, I think that's the thought behind the small flash hole is to help with those sorts of issues. So I think that's where we'll leave it, folks. Pretty happy with Sierra today. Can't complain much about today's results. That's it. I'll see you guys next time.